Hi, this is an overview of equilibrium. So two important things that you need to know about equilibrium. Here's the official definition. Equilibrium is the forward and the reverse rates of a reaction are equal. And notice what I capitalized, rates. It's the rate at which reactants change to products is the same rate at which products change back to reactants. So it's something that you want to brand, burn into your brain as you create this new file folder on equilibrium is equal rates. This rate and that rate are equal. Um, now, the second thing that you want to know is that once we reach this beautiful equilibrium, forward rate equals the reverse rate, um, the reactant and product concentrations are constant. Now, it doesn't mean they're the same. That doesn't mean that I'm going to have one mole, one mole, one mole, one mole. It just means that when we reach these beautiful rates, those concentrations will remain the same because the rate at which this changes to products is the same rate at which that changes back to reactants. Those amounts stay the same. My very first year teaching my honors chemistry class, this was the number one question students missed on the end of your final. They said that equilibrium was equal amounts. It's not equal amounts. It's equal rates, the movement forward and reverse. That's what's equal. And because you change at the same rate, the amounts stay constant. They stay constant. Doesn't mean they're going to be the same amounts. It's just that they stay constant. So those are the two big things that you are going to drive everything you do in your equilibrium unit. Um, now here I wrote just a generic equation. So the lowercase symbols, letters, they um, are indicating the coefficients and the capital letters are indicating our compounds, our elements. Is that double sign, that, that double arrow that I wanted to point out to you, that indicates equilibrium. Um, that this reaction is reversible it will go in the forward direction, reactants to products, and it will go backwards. It will go in the reverse direction, is how we say it. It will go from products back to reactants. Now, in theory, all reactions are reversible. Every reaction can go in the reverse direction. Um, in practicality, we haven't been able to get all reactions to go in reverse. It's like unfrying an egg. Um, but theoretically, everything can be reversed because it's just um, putting in that energy, the opposite amount of energy that's released, you put that energy in to go, go back if that would be a forward exothermic reaction. So conservation of energy, we should be able to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. A lot of reactions naturally do. Some reactions in nature, we only see them go in one way. But we know theoretically everything should be able to reverse. Now, sometimes when we're talking about equilibrium, you'll see this word added, dynamic, dynamic equilibrium. That just means that the reaction is constantly happening, that the rate at which reactants go to products is still going products back to reactants. And um, for when you look at it, you're at equilibrium, it looks like nothing's happening. In actuality, it's just changing at the same rate, forward and reverse, so it's constant. Those amounts are constant. It doesn't look like anything changes. Here's an example for you. So I have water in here. You can probably see a light line right there. There's the water line. If I were to seal this so that I couldn't lose any water vapor, this would be in dynamic equilibrium. The rate at which the liquid evaporates would come into equilibrium and be the same rate at which the gas, the water vapor, condenses and goes back to a liquid. Now, when you and I would look at it, we would just see that line like, oh, nothing's happening. It's maintaining that water line. In actuality, it's dynamic. It's constantly going liquid to gas and gas to liquid. But because it happens at the same rate, the liquid and the gas amounts are constant, so it looks like nothing's happening. So there's your term dynamic. It's constantly going reactants to products, products back to reactants. Um, now, I have a couple of graphs here for you. So in this first one, notice the y-axis is going to be the concentration and the x-axis is time. I have reactants, so I have a lot of reactants and I have no products. Um, so this begins to react. Now notice some of the reactants will be consumed, some products will be um, produced, um, and it comes into equilibrium. What's the clue? Looking at the graph, what's the clue that we're at equilibrium? It's the constant concentration. Notice concentration, those concentrations don't change. Those parallel, looks like railroad tracks, the concentrations don't change because the amount of reactants, or the rate at which we lose reactants is the same um, rate at which we lose products. So they go from reactants to products and products back to reactants. Um, this right here, when you have your uh, equilibrium, 
and there's more reactants than products. Okay, that's fine. You can have different amounts of reactants and products. They just have to be constant. Um, when you have more reactants than products, that is called product, or excuse me, let me say this. When you have more reactants than products, that's called reactant favored. So this would be a reactant favored reaction. And it's just that the reactant concentration, I can put that in brackets, is greater than the product concentration. Okay, now in this example, I start with all my reactants, I have no products. The reactants are consumed, products are produced, but then it goes into equilibrium where the products go back to reactants. So reactants change to products, products change to reactants, and notice I hit constant concentrations. Um, that tells me the rate at which reactants change to products is the same rate at which products change back to reactants. And notice here, the product concentration is greater than the reactant concentration. Let's write that down. Product concentration is greater than the reactant concentration. So they're constant, but I have more reactants than products. You know what this will be called? It's gonna be product favored. Product favored. And mathematically, we'll be able to determine that too. I'll show you that in upcoming, in upcoming um, videos. So there you have it, laying the foundation, your two big things rate um, are equal when you have the forward and reverse reaction and the concentrations are constant. Make a bumper sticker out of that. Put it on your mirror as you're doing equilibrium. Okay, have a nice day. Thanks.